Hello everybody and welcome back. This is the Celestial Perch and today we will be doing a civic deep dive into efficient bureaucracy. Now the reason why I've chosen efficient bureaucracy to look at rather than another civic is because they've taken a extremely boring civic, at least one of the most boring civics, maybe next to like mining guilds, as it used to only reduce your administrator upkeep by 20%. There was nothing else, didn't have any kind of interesting flavor, no replacements, no real change in gameplay. Whereas now, bureaucrats and priests provide edict fund scaling with their unity production. Now, it says scaling, so I'm curious to see just how much edict fund we can get out of our bureaucrats and priests. Now, we're going to load in with the order of Rakta and see just roughly how much edict fund we actually get out of our bureaucrats and priests. In this case, priests, as we're taking spiritualists to increase our unity by 10% from that, and then we've also taken traditional to increase our unity by an additional 10%. Now, as you can see here, we've taken prosperous unification, uh, just something that's basic, didn't want to take anything too different so that we wouldn't uh, see any major changes from the origin. Uh, prosperous unification is something you can always pick. It's very powerful. Of course, we have efficient bureaucracy. We didn't get anything that will impact our actual unity production, getting a warlike home in the sky leader and having an import export agenda. Uh, overall, rather nice. We can change really quickly from isolationist or from expansionist to isolationist. As we can see here, we're currently producing 6.1 unity per priest. So 6.1 unity, two amenities, and each priest is giving us three edict cap. Now, as you can see here, we've changed to isolationist, which gives us an additional 10% monthly unity. And I've let time take over and found myself a unifier, which will give us an additional 10% unity from priests. As you can see here, the priests are now producing 6.9. Still two amenities and still three edict cap. I'm going to see if there's any way I can increase this up to four in the early game. I have uh, been able to get the edict cap up to four. It did take some, let's just say, finagling. I changed it up to a fanatic spiritualist and happened to get reformer, which gives me an additional 10%. This gives me 20%. And then we changed our diplomatic stance to isolationist. We also have taken exalted priesthood, which gives us an additional one unity from priests, which is quite nice. And we still have our priest upkeep reduced. But we've been able to get our priests each producing 10.3 unity, which means now we get a bonus edict cap of four. Of course, I've also thrown on veneration of saints, this gives you an additional priest output by 20%. As well, with authoritarian, you get information quarantine, which gives you an additional 5 stability, which does translate into additional resources from jobs. This sort of build does seem interesting. It will allow you to run, if you happen to run into this situation, all three of your edicts at the start of the game. This isn't even factoring in if you get a charismatic leader, or you're running maybe cutthroat politics instead of something else uh, later in the game. The efficient bureaucracy actually has potential to, over the course of the game, add in quite a few edict cap and allow you to run additional edicts when they mean a lot more. For example, I'm going to put up on the screen, we have executive vigor. This gives you plus 100 edict cap, which in itself is pretty good as running this with other very powerful edicts can really push your economy up quite a bit. Now, does this mean that we'll be able to save an entire Ascension perk within the early game? It depends. There are some obvious opportunity costs here. Running Spiritualist for one to get the extra unity on our priests is something that many players won't want to do. Now still, having extra edict cap can be relatively powerful. To get the edict cap that would roughly correlate to executive vigor, you will need around 25 priests. You start with four. If you happen to go fanatic spiritualist or any type of spiritualist, your bureaucrat buildings are replaced with temples, each providing you two priest job. So with just 21 priests remaining to 
eke out the additional edict cap, we will need around 10 to 11 priest buildings. Or around 6 hollow temples if you happen to get the tech early. Having 6 to 10 planets isn't out of the question, and building at least 1 to 2 temples on each of your worlds is something that I would recommend. Gives you a lot of unity production, as well as it can help stave off some of your amenity issues in the early game. Overall, I would say efficient bureaucracy is obviously a lot more powerful than it used to be. Having extra edict cap when it really matters, the early game, can be quite powerful. Something to keep in mind is that these only affect your default specialist priests. Taking high priests, you will not get any edict cap from them. Kind of a sad uh, thing there. I was hoping for a little bit more interaction with the high priests and the efficient bureaucracy. It would be nice to see maybe high priests get at least the same edict cap as regular priests, or maybe even double for something that would kind of encourage the combination of efficient bureaucracy and exalted priesthood. I'm going to start rating the civics at the end of each uh, civic deep dive. And for efficient bureaucracy, on a rating scale of A to F, similar to the standard high school or college rating system, I would give it uh, somewhere within a C plus to B minus. It has its benefit. Um, it seems to be more powerful with an empire that can increase the priest output to a point where you go from three edict cap to four. It is admittedly hard to do and does require some uh, adjustment of your playstyle. But even just having some extra edict cap at the start of the game is relatively powerful. So overall, efficient bureaucracy has seen kind of an ascendance from F tier all the way up to high C, maybe low B tier. Now, I wouldn't expect people to start taking efficient bureaucracy over stuff like meritocracy, technocracy, slaver guilds, masterful crafters, or any of the other S tier, A tier civics. It does at least have more of a niche now, and I might even use it in some of my soon to be playthroughs in 3.6. But thank you, and have a blessed day as always.